I've had the misfortune of flipping through a frankly unforgivable amount of romance novels and just other weird books trying to mine for content. And I've definitely noticed a lot of patterns. So I kind of decided to try and see if I could write a sort of maybe the just a platonic form of the romance novel of like really the themes they go through and what they like to focus on. And in particular, the one kind of, I guess I would say, body part that they shockingly seem to come back to. No, makes sense. Makes sense. All right. Yeah. So that context, my story is called A Journey in the Dense Woods. Elizabetha whirled around, her flaxen hair cascading like a turbulent but soothing ocean over her shoulders. She could not believe Nigel could be so cold and blunt. He was always a stuffy old miser, but he had been particularly insufferable the last few weeks. Being the empath that she was, she knew he was either jealous or his wife had moved out of the manor again, or perhaps a touch of both. Pardon me, my lord, she asked coldly and bluntly. You heard me very well, Miss Humpersham, he shot back, coolly and undiplomatically. I promise you that nothing good will come of you gallivanting around with that unrefined oaf. He may be of noble blood, but he has the wildness of a common sailor. Do you forbid me to see him, my lord? She addressed her question with a frigid terseness. His response was as icy as it was frank. I knew it would make no difference if I tried, he said candidly and utterly devoid of warmth. She was halfway down the stairs by the time he finished the sentence. She barely slowed down when Rothbard attempted to question her on her way out the portcullis. Don't wait up for me, my lord. I have much to attend to. And then there's the little, like, asterisks that are sort of a bit of an act break. It was nary an hour later when she found herself in Chanceworth's embrace at the seaside, but it had felt like a day's journey. The ocean breeze ruffled her hair like the drapes she used to peer through, pining for him as she watched him stroll through the courtyard from afar. She was so shy then, but she still was, and even though it wasn't the first time he'd held her like this, that was 400 pages ago, each of the countless times he'd wrapped his strong arms around her at this persistently windy outcropping in the intervening chapters, it felt brand new again. Still, even this time, it truly felt different. We've denied ourselves so long, he whispered throatily in her ear, her now unleashed hair tumbling across his coarse beard. Surely you can feel how thoroughly I yearn for you. It was true. Through her thin dress, she could feel every part of him pressed against her, with a very particular protrusion straining his breeches. She had yet to see it, but she could envision it from what she could glean by touch and longed to stroke it. A deep mahogany mat of tightly wound curls, <laughs> manicured but still masculine. She sighed deeply, leaning back into him, giving him his cue to wander his hands down her slender body to their ultimate goal. Softly but firmly, his fingers massaged their way into the fine thatch of maple that formed a feminine triangle just below her waist. <laughs> it felt like a lifetime ago that a man had been down there, so long ago that the one she'd been with was nearly a boy with his unkempt walnut hedge fumbling awkwardly against her unruly birchen bush. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why the trees? <laughs> Do you desire this? He asked, shattering her daydream. Her ha his hands were edging their way to remove her vestments. Yes, my lord, she responded breathily. Yes, most indeed. It all happened in a blur of fabric and flesh and swishing locks most private. Finally, after so many near encounters, after so many longing gazes, after so many inscrutable side plots, she had him where she needed him most, his masculine tangle straining her at her awaiting rug, both manes <laughs> glistening now with anticipatory sweat. Wait, for the record, do they have genitals or is this just all pubes? <laughs> oh, they got genitals. It's just, you know, you focus on the most erotic parts, which is the pubes. <laughs> Right, 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 right. Cool. Silly me. Go on. Without so much as foreplay, his now inelastic and ungiving erogenous member was inside her, but she hardly noticed. 
What resonated through her most strongly was the fateful intertwining of their respective intimate tresses playing at each other. <laughs> First, gently kissing freshly shorn tips, then their very follicles becoming almost as one. The dance of his musky male fur against her dainty sensuous fleece brought profound ecstasy welling within them both. This went on for a blissful eternity, encapsulated concisely in a tidy six paragraphs, culminating in an obligatory climax at the exact same moment. As she thrashed, he withdrew his ever-rigid scepter and spilled his carnal juices onto her most precious wool, his thick <laughs> chest heaving. As he collapsed beside her, she rolled over and clutched her soft hand into his sated woolen forest. He laughed softly, but in a way that was still conventionally manly. Do you care to rest there a while, my love? She smiled demurely. I'm never letting go, my lord. The end. Oh, God. That was, that was incredible. Nice. I object to the term throatily. <laughs> I love that that's what you object to above all else in that. No, the rest was great. No notes. 